Welcome back for even more Optional Collection before we venture onward to the Fire Temple slash Mountain Temple. In the last video, we got the super rare Alchemy Stone slash Priceless Stone from the Snowdrift Station, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get yet another Alchemy Stone from Slippery Station. Before that though, there is another Force Gem we can do in this area that's unrelated to all that. Um, after completing the last section of the Tower of Spirits with the Warp Phantoms, we got a letter in the mail from Ferris. I received that letter in the last video, but I haven't actually read it yet. All right, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a good nerdy voice here, so the best I'm coming up with is like an overexcitable 80s kid voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Link, tell me, does this place look familiar to you? I'm over here trying to snap some shots of an awesome armor-plated version of that new train. It is so cool. I'll be around here for a while, so come pay me a visit if you get the chance. That would be sweet. Your bestest buddy, Ferris. So the area you can see in the letter is southeast of the Snow Temple slash Blizzard Temple, and as you get close, you can hear Ferris snapping away with his camera. You want to follow your ears to find him, and you may have to circle around the area a bit before you can get to him without the dark train or armored train coming after you. Now here I saw this armored train coming at me, but I thought I might be able to get to Ferris before the train could, and shooting armored trains stops them for a split second, but they won't ever break down completely like their counterparts. Um, anyway, this is a bad idea, so don't try this at home, kids. I'm a trained professional. <laughs> Seriously, though, I had saved right before this, so I tried this just to test it out, uh, but it ended up working, surprisingly. In general, though, very bad idea. Previous times that I've parked at, like, Beetle's Air Shop and been somewhat near a dark train when I got back to controlling my train, those other trains were right where I left them, so I didn't know if right after I got done talking with Ferris here if I'd have an armored train, like, right in front of my face and be unable to escape it, but it looks like the area reset entirely after I chatted with Ferris, so I'm being a bad role model here is basically what I'm trying to say, but uh, I figured I'd leave it in the video rather than re-recording it because it was kind of cool and it was intense and it actually works, which is neat. So it appears the locomotive fanatic is really just using us as a connection to meet up with Alfonso. He's the hero, apparently. You want to work your way all the way back to Aboda Village slash Outset Village in the far south of the Forest Realm. <laughs> Alright, so this force gem creates another shortcut from the Snow Realm to Castletown. Uh, it's just a little convenient, but it's not really that important on its own. What's cooler about it, though, is actually that it connects to some other tracks that we got from a different force gem, uh, where there is a gate leading to the Ocean Realm to the Snow Realm, but it's right next to Castletown. So you could, it's a really nice, convenient thing to go from Castletown to the middle of the Ocean Realm, or vice versa. Um, I haven't actually unlocked that gate yet. I haven't uh, activated it, but I will be doing that later on in this video. So I haven't had much of a chance to mention this yet, but you can also talk to Alfonso anytime now to switch out any train parts you've collected. I actually don't have any other train parts myself just yet because I've been saving up to purchase the golden set. Alright, so now we are moving on to the next Alchemy Stone quest. To access Slippery Station, you want to go all the way over to Papuchia slash Papuzia Village in the Ocean Realm. And once you arrive, you want to enter the biggest house in the middle of town and speak with the Wise One.
So I like how she just tells you that something awful will happen if you don't complete this optional side quest. She's like, you better do this side quest or else. <laughs> she makes it sound like it's the end of the world when we know for a fact that everything will be just great if we don't do this because it has nothing to do with the main quest. She won't settle for anything less than 50 rupees to purchase this vessel, so don't try to haggle with her or else you'll have to go through her whole spiel again. Uh, once you've got it, you want to make your way all the way over to the Snow Sanctuary slash Snowfall Sanctuary in the Snow Realm. This is one of the least forgiving delivery quests since it pretty much it's on the opposite side of Hyrule entirely, and if you get hit at all, then it will break. There's several different ways you could get there, but ironically enough, the fastest path is actually a gate that I haven't unlocked yet. You could have, but you kind of have to go out of the way to do that, so unless you were kind of like wandering around in the snow realm, or went there immediately after you unlocked those tracks to go activate that gate, then you probably don't have this gate available either. So the other options for us that are available for me at this time is to either travel to the forest realm and then gate to the snow realm, or you can go to the ocean realm, there's a gate there that takes you to the fire realm, and then gate to the snow realm and then finish off going to the snow sanctuary. But both of those paths are about the same distance and both have similar enemies at different points, so either way will work, but once you get to the snow realm, I recommend activating the gate that we got earlier. Now you can always wait until a little later when you aren't protecting valuable cargo, but as you just saw right here, that there's nothing attacking me and I took that detour and the worst is behind us already. Alright, so this forest gem creates some tracks to the far east of the Snow Temple slash Blizzard Temple that lead to Slippery Station. Yay! We'll head there in a moment, but first we have something vitally important to do. I'm just kidding. You can break the vessel if you want to, but Steam will demand you replace it. If you deliver another one to him, he will reward you with treasure. Now, you could technically just keep doing it over and over again just to be a jerk, but the amount of profit from it is actually not that great, and I'm actually not going to break it myself. I'm just going to, you know, I was just showing you that so that you could see what happens. Next, we're going to move on to Slippery Station. Yay! So hop on your train and head on over there avoiding the evil trains, or in my case, Sir Frosties, along the way. Now, the majority of the new tracks are actually a cave system, similar to the one on the far lower left corner of the map, which is filled with tektites. Now, a new enemy that I encountered earlier on in this chapter, they aren't that difficult, and some well-placed cannon shots will take care of them in one hit. Focus on aiming carefully rather than tapping all over your screen. They circle around twice before lunging at you anyway, so you should have plenty of time to take them out. Once you've made it past the bouncing critters, be ready to make an abrupt stop at Slippery Station so that you don't crash into the end there. So there's nothing of note out here, but I've often found at least one piece of treasure in the jars out here, so when you're done exploring, go ahead and enter the cave to the north. Alright, so this little game area cave thing is pretty self-explanatory, you just run like crazy. It's very similar to the one room from the Snowdrift Station, so I'm not really sure why Nintendo did this. Like, maybe they finished off the other one entirely, and then they decided, you know what, we can expand on that. But for whatever reason, each course has a different prize, and it's totally free. So step on the floor switch of the amateur course to get started. Run on the ice and cut the corners as tight as you can without actually walking into the walls, because that'll make you move slower, obviously. And remember to start turning early to account for how you slide on the floor. So you want to round the corners and start turning before you actually reach the corners, so that by the time you actually arrive, you are immediately starting to move in that direction. Walk on the solid chunks of ground whenever you can, since it's a good way to pick up speed. You move faster on solid ground than you do on the ice. 
So I only rolled once that last time, but I was trying to show that it's completely possible to do these first two courses without rolling. The last one, however, you have to roll to pick up enough speed, and I'll explain this here on this pro course. You can roll by double tapping on the screen, and it gives you a brief boost in speed, but it only it makes you unable to control Link for a few seconds. Some well-placed rolls on these courses can actually make you get through them much easier and faster. It's particularly effective if you use them just before leaving solid ground, which makes you go much faster than even your fastest running speed for a few seconds. So whenever you get on a patch of raw stone, purposefully run on it, then face the direction you want to go, and roll just before you touch the ice. The other thing that rolling is good for is rounding corners. Sometimes you'll swing too wide and you'll see Link is slowing down like crazy. You want to roll in the direction you want to go and you'll pick up speed immediately. I wouldn't necessarily recommend rolling the entire time. The point of the roll is more uh, at very specific points to take advantage of how you move on the ice and to compensate for how crazy you're moving around. The second course gives you a rare treasure which is worth 500 rupees. Warp back to the start and now we have the hardest track, the champion course. This one is quite a bit harder than the previous two and it is not possible to complete this without rolling. It's kind of misleading because the first two courses you can do it without this technique so perhaps it was designed this way on purpose so that you can feel clever once you've figured out the trick to it. I want to watch closely to see where I am holding my stylus at the corners and notice exactly when I, when and where I am rolling. The point is to maximize my speed and keep me facing the correct direction at all times. Sweet! This is the second out of three alchemy stones that are found in chests throughout the game. Worth a hefty 2,500 rupees, these guys are needed to purchase the rare Golden Train set. With that, we are done with everything we had to do at this station, and that wraps up all this collection stuff. So work your way all the way over to the Fire Realm, and I will meet up with you for the next video to continue on with the main quest stuff and enter the next temple.